be responding to them throughout <clears throat> the session today. And then um, also, if if you're if this is your first time to one of our webinars, we have a YouTube channel where we record and post all of these recordings. Um, and also, if you've missed ones in the past, they all are relevant and focused on purview. You can review those past recordings there. Um, and I think that is it other than if you have any questions and we have time at the end, we're going to open it up so you can come off mute um, towards the end again, time permitting, and we will uh, we'll address them verbally then. Um, so without further ado, we have three presenters today. We have Habib Nawabi, Donnie Abbey, and Amit Singh. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over, I believe, to Habib um, for you to do the, the opening. Thanks, Barry. Um, as Barry had mentioned, uh, our purview compliance tool is a set of options and capabilities that come together to help an organization be more compliant and be able to secure their files, documents, and everything. And with the power of Security Copilot is dedicated to providing the most effective and comprehensive compliance and security solutions for our customers. Today's webinar that Donnie and Amit will be handling will focus on the efficiency and effectiveness effectiveness of the combined power of our solutions. Danny. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time today. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I do have a cough, so every once in a while I might go on mute. Um, thank you for your time today. So I, my name is Donnie Abbey. I am the lead for Copilot for Security for state and local government. And my co-presenter here, Amit, is the technical specialist. We are dedicated to this solution. Um, as you may or may not know, we uh, GA, we made this generally available on April 1st. Uh, it is still FedRAMP, it's pre-FedRAM cert, so that that is expected in August 2024. And of course, GCC availability comes a little after that due to all the back-end processes involved in getting GCC tenants uh, uh, able to um, you know, have these same capabilities, right? Which I think all of you are all too familiar with. Adhani, you are on mute. Was I just talking all this time on mute? Or did you hear no. the first part? No, we heard okay. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Fine. Uh, so you heard the first part about GCC coming after FedRAMP High, correct? Correct. Correct. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, this is what I have. We have lined up today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how the partnership with Azure Open AI uh, evolved into us offering these various copilots that you are uh, seeing pop up everywhere. What is the uh, AI shared responsibility model that we have also introduced? Because as companies are starting to either build their products or use some level of foundational elements from third parties, uh, there's a responsibility that the organization holds and the vendor holds. So it's important that you all know that, uh, both from a compliance perspective as well as you know responsible, safe AI perspective, right? And I think security compliance and identity, you, you've been hearing that through BB and others, uh, but I'm going to just touch on a couple of points there. And then we dive into how does Copilot for Security fit into the purview suite? What are the benefits that you get? I'll touch on the business model so that you have an understanding of how the pricing works a bit. Um, and the key thing here is the demo where Amit will take on and show you the product uh, as it fits into Purview and the various components within Purview. All right. So um, Microsoft, as you know, I mean, we've been doing AI and ML going back to 2014. We partnered with OpenAI back in 2017, more from a you know financial perspective, where we were investing in in you know what they were doing. But then when they needed um, you know AI and training building and training models, uh, it takes a lot of compute power. So once they had all the money and all the smart people, they needed all the infrastructure to go build this foundation model uh, that we have come to call ChatGPT, OpenAI uh, foundation models, right? 
And um, Microsoft provided the supercomputing required for that with the uh, shared ambition of democratizing AI as a technology platform, bringing it to the masses, but doing so safely and responsibly and securely. And in 2023, we announced a major partnership or we launched that huge partnership publicly, um, at which point we both companies commercialized products. Now, at that point, we brought Azure OpenAI into the Azure environment and offered that to our customers. So in other words, uh, our customers, you all, were able to start using the GPT models, you know, whether it was, I think at the time it was GPT 3.5, you were able to now use that within the confines of Azure to build your own AI applications where your data was not being shared outside of. Uh, my, well, Microsoft wasn't even looking at your data and OpenAI was not getting any information of our customer, whatever the customers are doing. So um, our customers received the same solutions that are out there through OpenAI, but now within the Azure confines, and they were able to start building their own AI-based applications with the safety, security, privacy, and all the guardrails that they are used to from the Azure services. Um, that was great, but we also realized that not every customer is going to have uh, the required skills and experience to go build their own AI applications. So we decided and we started introducing all these co-pilots, right? And there is a co-pilot pretty much for everything. And uh, if you have not tried this person on, on your O365, on your personal uh, instances, you should. It's a lot of fun. Um, but today we're talking to you about co-pilot for security because as we, as you all may know, the jobs you hold and you know, their you know, cybersecurity roles, there are so many roles open and not enough folks, not enough people. And those who do, um, who are already in cybersecurity roles, they may not have expertise around all of the, you know, cybersecurity is so vast and so deep, right? Uh, there just isn't enough people. We've known this for decades, and these this is the big problem that Microsoft is attempting to solve for. Now, as we were doing that, as I mentioned, it's important for customers and agencies to know if you are going to build your own AI platforms, source your own data, train your own models, right? Tune it and build applications on top of it, right? And, you know, as far as the usage goes, right? Impact of that application on the people who are using it, people, you know, whatever it's being used against, all of that has to be managed, monitored and delivered in a safe, secure manner. That all uh, rests on the side of the customer if you're building this from scratch. But if you are starting to use third-party uh, functionality foundation models uh, or fully built AI uh, solutions, then of course the vendor takes on uh, some of the responsibility or most of the responsibility. And it's important for our customers to start understanding this as they think about um, their AI journey. I think you, I would, I, you may have already seen this, but I wanted to touch on this, right? Key to successful, safe, secure AI within your own organization is certainly uh, information protection, data loss prevention, right? So you need to make sure that your sensitive information in your organization is identified, labeled, classified, and labeled as such. And access to that information is properly handled. So identity and access management is absolutely compulsory that you have the right policies and the right controls in place to ensure that only authorized people have access to your sensitive information and only to what they need to see and no more. So, uh, you know, no extra privileges, right? And then as uh, users are accessing your corporate assets or sensitive information, it is important that they do so with a device that's clean, coming from a clean environment. So you do need to have line of sight into the devices that they are using to access uh, your corporate environment or corporate assets. And another area that's become key is knowing whether your employees are already using AI solutions, right? And you may not want that. And if that's the case, you do need visibility to any shadow AI, and that's where something like a cloud app security broker would come into play to give you that visibility. 
it's important to have these sort of key things done or as you are starting to use AI applications or think of thinking about bringing AI applications into your environment, getting these things in check is important. Foundationally, it's important for cybersecurity, right? But uh, as you think about also compliance, these are some key things that you need to keep in mind. The other important point that I would like to note here is that when you start using any of the co-pilots, there is no way for users to over-provision themselves at the co-pilot level. So if they are given a co-pilot license and they start using it, let's say M365 co-pilot, if they don't already have access to sensitive information, if they don't have access to certain key applications, when they ask questions, they're not going to get answers to those things that they might be asking if it's sensitive information that they do not have access to. I hope that's clear. So the, the point is the policies that you apply to users, to data, all of that flows into the various co-pilots that you would be using. Um, there's no way for users to over-provision themselves once they start using those co-pilots. So I want to take a very simplistic approach to explaining what Copilot for security is simply because this is all new, right? All new to everybody, AI for this, AI for that. So let me explain it this way. If you could imagine having a peer or colleague that's available to you 24 by seven, who can answer pretty much any question related to cybersecurity, DLP alerts or writing the DLP policy, um, device management policy, uh, identity and access management policy, or asking questions about users who are risky, um, or you know, uh, something about it, something about a device uh, that could be out of compliance, why it is so, comparing policies, things like that, where you can simply ask the question in natural conversational language, and this colleague or peer could answer you contextually at any time, 24 by seven, right? Don't need benefits, no water, no food, uh, available to you at all times to answer your questions. And as I said, contextually and accurately, that is what Copilot for security is. It is your very first generative AI assistant that is actually meant to change the way you do work as far as like cybersecurity goes, compliance goes, helping you collaborate across these different tiers, identity and access management, data loss prevention, compliance, where if you what you're doing on one side could be shared with the other side with the SOC to say, hey, this is what I'm seeing through Copilot for security. Can you run the same prompt and see if you're seeing the same thing and see if you can make sense of it? And let's, you know, let's make sure there's nothing, uh, nothing that we need to be uh, concerned about, right? So how do we do that? Well, we took the OpenAI foundation model. That foundation model already knew how to understand language, answer questions. We then had to make sure for the cybersecurity purposes that it can now understand cybersecurity language, right? To be able to answer cybersecurity questions. So we used Microsoft security data, Microsoft security tools, along with our threat intelligence. And we created this platform where users can ask these questions specific to cybersecurity, and you would get cybersecurity responses, but more importantly, also specific to your environment. Now to build this out and uh, to deliver this to customers, of course, we have to have hyperscale infrastructure because it is compute heavy. And then when we deliver this platform, we deliver it with things called cyber skills and prompt books. Cyber skills are things like reverse engineer malware, analyze a script, write a script, uh, turn um, natural language into SQL or KQL. Things that may take you know, uh, uh, analysts or engineers, a little bit of time, even if they do know how to do it, or for those who have not been in the industry for too long, it might be difficult, right? They, it might take a long time for them to get going. Now it's built into this platform with a click of a button that skills available to provide that information, right? Making things faster, making analysts more proficient, efficient, 
uh, and being able to do their job of addressing an incident or an issue uh, faster than having to research what needs to be done. Prompt books are things where when you're using generative AI applications, when you ask questions, these are called prompts. And if you are um, using specific prompts on a regular basis, instead of having to write them every single time, you can actually create these prompts and save them into a prompt book. We give a set of default prompts out of the box, and there's actually a GitHub repo now filled with other sample prompts that was just released yesterday or announced. I, I saw an announcement yesterday. Um, so we give a set of prompt books out of the box that serves as a template and guideline for you to even go and build your own custom prompt books or use the default ones as they are. And the final piece of this is a security spe specific orchestrator. This is the thing that actually puts the sort of the plan together for the response when somebody asks the issues a prompt. It's the orchestrator that puts together the response. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to first understand, OK, what's being asked? Do I have the right data sources to ground my response in? Because when we built this platform, it was not just so that we can answer Microsoft specific questions. It is so that we can answer first and third party questions. If there is a plugin available for those third parties, you can ask these natural language questions of your third party environment, much like you would do your first party Microsoft environment. And this orchestrator is a key component to that. So we, when we built this, it was not so that, you know, it could just be a benefit to Microsoft solutions and to Microsoft customers just for Microsoft tools. It was really truly to solve a problem. Copilot for security comes in two experiences. One is the standalone, the other one is the embedded. In, a st in the standalone experience is where you are able to get different kinds of products, first party, third party. And for those who partner with, partnered with us uh, during the early access program, some of them actually built the plugins so that they could have that available to customers when we went general availability. So there are a bunch of plugins that are available to you already. If there is a product that you are using where there isn't a plugin, you can ask the vendor to develop a plugin. It's not very difficult to do. Or you can build your own custom plugin, which the capability is provided within the platform for you to be able to do that. When those plugins are built and available, there's a plugin win window, which allows you to then turn those plugins on before you start prompting for information. The embedded experience is what really gives you the first party access. And I want to say this the caveat here is that not all of these will have embedded today for GC, meaning uh, for GCC customers, not all the embedded experience are available. GCC customers have Entra and Intune embedded experiences, but the rest of it is only available to commercial customers because these are all GCC services, whereas these are Azure services. So um, in the embedded experience for Purview, what happens is when you open your Purview console, there's Copilot for security is going to be embedded to the side where now you can use Copilot for security to, oh, the lights turned off in my, uh, room, um, you can use the Copilot for security em embedded experience to ask about, help me write a policy for something, or if it's a DLP alert, help me, you know, investigate that and break that down and see if there's actually truly an issue here. You can go from that embedded experience to the standalone experience and continue your investigation from first party, looking through your third party, or if you're on the compliance side and you're only using Purview and you're seeing something, this is your opportunity to collaborate with the SOC, let them know what, the, what you're seeing, and then the SOC can carry on their investigation to see if there's truly uh, a security issue or a compliance issue or uh, an incident in progress. These are, so just keep in mind, as I said, we released Copilot for Security April 1st. This is brand new technology, brand new industry. This has never been done before. So the skills that we have released today, we're just scratching the surface. With the immersive or the standalone experience, 
you can basically look at a DLP alert, ask these prompt for this information, and Amit is going to go through a demo, so I won't go uh, into this exhaustively. But basically, you start with a DLP alert and you start asking more questions of it so that you can get a better idea as to is there an issue? How, you know, how do I go about addressing it? In the embedded experience, you could do, in addition to sort of the security compliance piece, you could actually do like asking for help in writing policies and things like that. Now, if we may not have all of this available from the get-go, but it is coming or you know, a, a part of it is already available, uh, as we're, I would say, as we're really in the crawl stage of this solution, as powerful as it is today, there's, we have we have so much more to deliver and we are working on it and delivering stuff on a weekly basis. Let me see. I'm not going to go to these. This is basically to show you what the embedded experience looks like and how you can, you know, where you can start prompting. Is there a question? OK. Um, and you know, once you start asking the questions, whether, uh, it, you know, it's related to communication compliance or it's related to insider risk or it's related to a DLP alert, you can start asking those questions through the right from the embedded experience. You do not need to know, you know, KQL, SQL, any kind of QL to ask these questions and you get the responses in just natural language. Makes it easier for just anybody to understand uh, to take uh, the necessary actions based on what they are getting in way of responses. Um, this There's uh, embedded experience available for e-discovery as well. Once again, the use cases may be limited today because we are continuing to build and deliver them um, on almost a weekly basis. This I just wanted to flash up here to say, look, we went GA on April 1st. Those who are on commercial tenants have access and visibility to all the features and functionality that's available. But for GCC tenants, they have everything uh, except the visibility of Defender XCR alerts from a standalone and or from, as well as from an embedded experience. Same is the case with Purview. Uh, you don't have access in standalone or embedded if you are a GCC customer, but if you are um, if you're commercial, you do have access to all of this. All right. Quick run on what happens on the back end when you issue a prompt. So you're in the purview console um, or whether it's standalone or embedded, when you issue a prompt, here's the process that happens on the back end. Your prompt goes to our copilot for security orchestrator. This is the thing that, I, as I mentioned earlier, puts a plan together for the response. In pre-processing, we take, we ground the, the prompt to ensure we have the right data sources to be able to answer that question. But at the same time, we take parts of that prompt over to our large language model. We are doing a responsible AI check to make sure that the question that's being asked does not contain anything nefarious or inappropriate. On the post-processing back, we also check to see the response to the prompt will not have something nefarious or inappropriate. We come back to the orchestrator, reground, and sure we have the appropriate data sources to provide the answer to that prompt. And for the most current and the most latest information, we also use something called retrieval augmented generation, which you may have heard of, RAG, right? We use RAG to ensure that we are, if there's current or latest information required for the prompt that's being issued, like something to do with, let's say, threat intel that's more like more recent, then we ground that in the most current uh, threat intel that's already paired into the product. And when we, we then go back to through the orchestrator and provide the response back to the user. And the way we ensure that the uh, information is accurate is we are certainly you know, looking at the data sources within your own environment to be able to answer the question. So the data must exist and the data sources must exist for it to answer the question. And we're using things like RAG and, you know, appropriate grounding to make sure the, the answer is accurate. 
all of this is happening within the, within the Microsoft security tr trust boundary within Azure. At no point do we take any of your data out of your tenant. So your data does not leave your tenant at any point. Your data is not used to train the model. What you're using is a fully trained model. The foundation model is already trained. You're just using it. Uh, for the purpose of asking these questions. As I mentioned, we have first party and third party support. When we start introducing or you start using those third party solutions with those plugins, that is a point at which you might make a call outside of the Azure environment uh, because it's essentially an API call. So things like ServiceNow, Splunk or Netscope or whatever plugins that we have released to whatever you build out, you know, at which point it'll make a call outside to those applications and then come back and provide the response. Important to all Gen AI, I think you may have already heard this as well, which is effective prompting. The better you are at prompting, the better responses you will get. So as you think about prompt engineering or effective prompting, these are some things to keep in mind, goal, context, uh, expectation, and source. And I won't go too much into this because you'll, I'm sure you'll get this slide deck as well. And I want to make sure we're getting to the demo quickly. Microsoft is doing all of this, uh, you know, setting the uh, gold standard for res responsible and safe AI. Um, we've, you know, when we build products, we deliver products, uh, develop and deliver products. We, you know, adhere to these six key principles. But not only that, we work with various governments. We have made global commitments, national, federal commitments to delivering these solutions in a safe, secure, and responsible manner. This, these are all being built to make everyone more efficient, proficient, faster at what they do, and to help folks do more with less, meaning use the resources you have. You have a team that may just need a little bit of help. Here's the little bit of help right, for you to get going, make you faster, better, um, and being able to do more uh, because you now have an assistant to help you out. A little bit about the business model. This is a consumption model. Um, it's based on a unit of measure called security compute unit. You need to have at least one SCU SCU provision to use Copilot for security. We can dive deeper into pricing. I just wanted to flash it here, give you the calculator at some point when you want to take a look at it, you can. It's not user-based licensing. It's basically uh, reserving compute power for you to be able to use Copilot for security. How much, how many SCUs needed uh, depends on how big your team is, how often you run investigations. So there are different factors. So it's really a one-on-one -on -one conversation that's required to determine what you would need. And there will be some learning to do in the beginning because you may not know um, how much you need as well. So we work together to figure that out in the first few months. With that, what I'd like to do is ask my colleague, Amit, to take over. And if there are any questions in the chat, I'll start answering and please, do post your questions to the chat. Thank you, Dani. Um, appreciate it. So quick question for the team. Has anybody like seen a demo of Copilot for security or you know seen the embedded or the standalone experience? This this may be a slightly different audience admit. Um you know, a lot of these folks are directly responsible for security, but uh, that's my answer. I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in. OK, that's fine. Yeah, so I'm going to start here and let me know when you can see my screen and if the screen looks OK. <clears throat> can you all see my screen? Awesome. Oh, Thanks, Barry. Great. Thanks, Wes. Um, so this is Microsoft Copilot for security. So what Danny was mentioning to you, we we provide this two experiences for you. One is what is called the immersive or the standalone experience. So you just go to securitycopilot.microsoft.com. This is what your homepage looks like. Anything you write within Copilot for security as part of the prompts right here or using prompt books, you can use prompt books. What does that, that does is create sessions for you. 
So anything you have done, it's session. You can share those sessions with folks that you are investigating with or looking into information. What it also has like owner settings. So like, you know, if you're a um, global admin, you're a security admin, you get those privileges. You can also assign privileges and then you can also see what usage is being done on my Copilot instance. As we are talking about purview, I'm going to show how this all comes together and how does this work. So Copilot for security does not, like Donnie mentioned, it does not store your logs. That it's not a seam tool. It's not something where your logs are ingested or stored. What Copilot for security does for you is reason over the logs, data that you allow it to reason over. And the way you do it is through plugins. At the bottom, if you hit this sources thing, looks like a Christmas gift box to me. But here you have multiple different solutions, and these are the first party solutions what Donnie was talking about where you get the embedded experience within the solution itself. So you have Azure AI search to bring in your knowledge base, but here's the piece for purview. All you have to do is turn it off, turn it on, and boom, you're able to now reason over DLP alerts, insider risk management alerts, e-discovery, communication compliance. Those are the pieces, those are the use cases that are available to you currently. And please, I want to make this a more, you know, two ways. So if you have any questions, please stop me. So that's plugins. So let's start here. And as we look into, you know, if I'm a security and if I'm a risk analyst, I'm a data analyst, all I'm going to do is come in here and I'm going to search for a prompt book. So I have a prompt book that I call DLP. So here are the prompts that are part of this prompt book. So all I'm asking in natural language to Copilot for security is show me the top five DLP alerts that I should prioritize today. I'm not watching the chat, Donnie, if you don't mind. Thank you. So these are the prompts, and this is the standalone experience that you will get, you know, as part of Copilot for security. So here's my prompt book. I have a bunch of prompts with this. And we can just run this together. So all I have to do is start new session. And I hit run. So it's going to run each of those prompts in sequence, showing you, hey, show me the top five DLP alerts that I should prioritize today, and then so on and so on. So as it runs, let's go back here where I've already run it. So show me the top five DLP alerts that I should prioritize today. I really want to bring this to the attention of this group. Microsoft is the only company out there with generative AI plus security that gives you what is called responsible AI upfront. What do I mean by that? When I ask in natural language, show me the top five DLP alerts that I should prioritize today. Within that, it will tell you what plugin it chose. So it tells you Microsoft purview upfront. It's not making stuff up. It's not grabbing information where we don't know what the source is. And that is part of the AI orchestrator on the back end, as well as the responsible AI check for you. So let me minimize this. So that's what is called orchestrator plus responsible AI. And then it will retrieve the alerts and it will prepare your response. So your response looks like this. Here are the alert IDs, alert name. You can export this to Excel if you wanted to. But if I click on this, it will give you a little more details. So it gives you details, alert ID, here's the name, severity, timestamp, and what user, UPN, user principal name, is part of this risk level. Great. As I move on and I want to investigate this as a risk analyst slash data analyst, all I'm going to ask is tell me about the fourth alert. So here's your fourth alert, right? We're looking at this. It's high. It tells you it's a DLP policy. So we have DLP policies. You have to have those DLP policies created so that they can generate alerts. And it gives you a severity of high. It gives you a timestamp and the user. So using natural language as I investigate this, all I'm asking Copilot for security is tell me about the fourth alert. What is this about? So it tells me without me having to go to the purview portal or having to do any more digging, it's going to tell me 
this is a high severity DLP alert. Here's the ID. We'll give you the name of the alert. This currently is in new status. And is associated with this user. That's the part that is very, very key here because what Copilot for Security does is integrates with all those solutions, all those plugins that you allow it to. But we want to complete the picture. We want to see the user and you know where our users and identities live. That's Entra. So the file, it also tells you the file with Nord in this alert is this. If you have access to that, if you click here, it will take you to the exact file. The policy responsible for this alert, which is really key because I want to know what policy fired this alert in DLP. So it will tell you the rule that triggered this alert is this. Here's the policy ID with rule ID. This is related to workload on one drive. This was this file was found to contain this credit card numbers. So I am hoping that you are doing sensitivity labels. You have data classification and those sensitive info types where you're blocking like social security numbers, credit card numbers, you know, bank wire, ABN numbers, any of those. So that is what is found as part of that DLP alert, DLP policy, and it will give you this additional information. Now we know there is a file involved with this, right? So as I come down, I say, show me all the file details for this alert. The file involved in this alert is located at this location. It tells you it's also Word doc. I don't have to look around anywhere else. And it tells you it was triggered because of detection of sensitive information in that file. It also gives you a confidence level. So we know how those confidence levels work when it comes to sensitivity labels. It also tells you for this one, you don't have any sensitivity labels created or applied to the file. So I haven't called it you know, highly confidential, confidential, you know, basic, whatever those are. So it gives you that additional information as well and gives you the alert was generated twice for the same file, matching a DLP rule and the user type, and it gives you their information and the user is regular. Now from here, we looked at the DLP alert. We found some additional information about the file. Why was it triggered? Now, my next prompt is, can you summarize the risk associated with user in this alert? Again, it chooses Microsoft Purview. So we know when we look at risk in a context of Purview, we are typically talking about insider risk management. We also know there are risky users in Entra as well, our identity platform. So it chose Microsoft Purview, and now it gives you the following details. Gives you the user details, you know, what their title is, their principal name, and it says their severity is not applicable. So that means they don't have, this has not triggered what is called an insider risk management alert. But there are some top risk factors that you should look. The user is identified as a high impact user because they access more content containing sensitive info than other users. And it also tells you user has a high impact because they have content which prioritize sensitivity labels more than 99% of the other users. And here's the key piece that I really always want to keep focus on is exfiltration. Was some sort of exfiltration done out of my tenant? What was used? I want to find those details. So user is found to be sharing SharePoint files. And it gives you even more details if you were to click here. Now, we looked at purview, right? What this brings together, that's the power of Copilot for security without me having to go anywhere else. Now I'm choosing the plugin, which is for Entra. It's our identity platform. And all I'm asking is give me additional details about the user in the above prompt. Can you tell me what other users did the user interact with? Like who did they talk to, right? So it will come up here. It's going to give you the user details and will tell you it has interacted with several other users. There are 10 employees listed in the data, all of whom they have their accounts enabled. And one of them is this help deck desk administrator who was disabled. They also tell it also tells you they are from different departments, including finance, security, human resources, and all of that. Then also tells you their office locations. Also tells you they belong to two different companies, Woodgrove and Park City. 
and it tells you that their accounts were created between this time and this time. So moving on, now I want to find out what groups, because based on those groups in Entra, they have some privileges. Maybe they have compliance administrator privileges. Maybe they have compliance reader privileges, any of those. So I want to find out what groups in Entra is this user part of. Again, it's going to choose Entra and it will tell you that the user is part of these 10 groups. Here are some of the descriptions, their email, group emails, and it will tell you, you know, some of them are dynamic memberships, some are security groups or unified, however, those are defined within your groups. So we get that information as well. From here on out, so we looked at purview, we bring the picture together with Entra, looking at some more details about that user. Now, as we investigate further, I also want to know some device info. So for that, Copilot for Security is able to go to Intune. If you are using Intune, it tells you that this user is located in the user in the US and it was created on this time. However, there are no devices managed by Intune that this user is associated with. So are they using BYOD? Are they not hybrid joined? Are they not compliant? So something to troubleshoot and investigate further. But that capability is available to you to be able to do that. And then I also ask, is this user part of risky users in Entra ID? And it will give you the details that this user is not listed among the risky users in Microsoft Entra. But we do know that they have some characteristics that would make them part of the insider risk management in purview. So it provides that information for you. I ask a little more, tell me if this user is enabled. They are enabled and they are currently employed. Here's their phone number gives you all the details. So bringing an end to this investigation about DLP alerts within Copilot for security in the immersive experience, I have looked at the DLP alert. I have looked at what files were part of it. Why was it triggered? Is this user risky with an insider risk management as well as risky users in Entra? And then I want to bring this all together and this is the key benefit that you get out of Copilot. I don't know how you do reporting today, but I can ask Copilot to write an executive report summarizing this investigation. And then the key piece is include recommendations for the next steps. It should be suited for a non-technical audience. You can also say, hey, write this for a technical audience, but create the summary for a non-technical audience. So using natural language, you can pivot however you want that report. So here it creates this executive summary for you, data loss prevention alert. It gives you the details, is a valued member of our team, part of 10 groups. Um, our security system do not currently list this user as part of the risky users. And here are some of the recommendations. Investigate the incident further, review the user activities. Do you need to take their R back away? Do you need to redo their MFA enrollment? Do you need to reset their password? These are some of the things that you would think through, but it creates that for you. Now, as I do this investigation, I can also share this copy link and I can share this with the other data analyst. And they might want to continue investigating this. So all you have to do is come up here, hit share, copy the link or send an email to them and they'll get this session. I would share this with our data team, with our data analysts, risk analysts, but not outside of them. You do not want other folks who are not part of your team to have the access to that session. What you can do is like, if I was to share this with Barry, and Barry is not part of my team, but I do want him to know that what we are investigating. All I have to do is check this box and hit this pin board, and it's gonna pin my investigation to this pin board on your right screen. So as it runs through, summarizing session, it will tell you the items that it has pinned. Give it a second here. Any questions so far? So, if I'm going to share this with Barry and I don't want to share the session, I can hit export. I can download this summary as Word. I can also, if I hit mail, I can email it to Barry, or I can just copy this and send an email or send a note in Teams. 
So you're actually sharing the investigation, but not the session itself. And that brings us to the end for the standalone. And I know we have limited time here. That's the same thing that you will see within the embedded experience, which what Danny was mentioning to you. If you come to DLP and come to alerts, you have what is called the embedded experience with Copilot. That's all I have, Donnie. Yep. Yeah. And Chris, I, I appreciate your comment. Um, this is this is it's a it's a battle that we're fighting to make sure that we get GCC uh, to, available as quickly as we can. Um, these webinars are meant to be informational, uh, you know, to understand the art of the possible, what's coming, what's you know, what's going to be available to you. Uh, as you know, as I mentioned early on, it's a brand new. I mean, it's a brand new segment altogether, uh, and we are. Uh, going as fast as we can to get the certifications done, and sometimes it's less on us than more on the uh, you know the process that needs to be followed, right? So, it's happening, and when it when it's available, uh, it's just it takes five minutes to stand up. So, we wanted to make sure our customers knew that we are we are thinking about these big problems, we are solving for them, and. If you are having resource challenges, skills, and labor challenges today, uh, there's help coming, right? Uh, and I understand the GCC concerns because <laughs> I cover uh, state and local government, so uh, it's a it's a daily it's a it's a daily thing for me trying to get GCC done as quickly as possible. But it's sometimes it's just outside of our control, unfortunately. But and we have some customers that are not just only GCC. There are some uh, state and local government customers who are on commercial tenants. So it's important for them to get this information as well. Any other questions? We, we address the questions in chat, but if you have any more, please do come off mute or uh, type it into the, into the chat and we'll be happy to. Yeah, Chris, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yep. If there's, there are, believe it or not, there are some SLG customers who are moving off of GCC into commercial because they don't want to wait, you know, and um, it's a constant battle for us too. We're always trying to say, why can't we get it done faster? Why can't, they're like, listen, it's not, we have to go through certifications and we can do all the work and hand that over. It could take two weeks. They come back and say, something's missing or something has to be redone. And we can't really just